Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Blessings to you all. I pray for you that today you will see the glory of God in your life, in your family, in your work. As you go out and as you come in, 24-7 I pray, in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus it is done glory to God thank you Jesus we are blessed once again to have this opportunity to share with you the gospel the only message that brings all humanity together you see one of the things that you will discover about the gospel it does not bring separation or segregations it brings all of us together the bible says for god so, so loved the world you know at times when we are trying to interpret the scriptures and the bible we do it in our human perception and uh, flurity and weaknesses and uh, biases and so we do think like men instead of thinking like God and God does not have any grudges in his heart he's the love and therefore love includes everybody you see we are always shocked when we discover the love of God we are still partial in our perceptions and teachings and lives and it is us against them it is me that is better than the other it is us who are the best you know competition uh, or is between ourselves and a lot of things you know that will of course influence our way of thinking and uh, perception and interpretation and unfortunately that will not give us the real the right picture image we should have or carry as we are we approach the message of the gospel we instead of listening and hearing what is teaching us we bring in that bias that uh, wrong uh, perception and uh, interpretation and so we we mix up things and we surprisingly conclude that that is how God sees it. So I, I'm just bringing this out to show you that no, it's not the case. You know, he's all inclusive. You know, the gospel is all inclusive. And it's so hard for us to grasp because we think of some people and we are like, no, these people are supposed to be punished. <laughs> And that is because we look at ourselves and we think we merit, you know, favor. We merit because we have done something and uh, we're better than those ones. But I think the best way to put it, we rather say they need a chance as well. They need a chance. They need help. They need support. Yeah, that means that I'm, I'm not saying that some people are not. Some people can be cruel. Some people can be evil. Some people can be can go to an extreme that is hostile to the entire society and that's why you have some correction centers and detention centers and so on and so forth though this does not mean the waiver that is in that place is uh, necessarily a criminal or has committed some crime you know at times people will be there just because of course some other people have power that have sent them there under 
no uh, legal grounds rather because of uh, hatred uh, trying to show him that I have power I can make you suffer and so on so forth still those biases those things that are working in societies that are present in, in, in the lives of people evil working against good good evil and so on and so forth but I'm saying it does though all that is the situation is the case still everybody needs salvation everybody needs salvation of course that's why salvation now comes in salvation comes in in that men cannot save themselves if they are suffering from that evil from whatever that is bounding them this is what we've been looking at the law of spirit of life no we we shall see this in romans chapter 8 the law of spirit of life law of spirit of life that set me free from the law of sin and death see if people are under certain laws the law that law of sin and death you know they need some help and the help is the law of life the law of the spirit of life see they need some the power of god to set them free they need the message the gospel which is the power of god to set them free so instead of condemning them we were supposed to wish them salvation see because even if he dies or that person goes, someone else will rise and he will be also notorious as uh, the one who passed. And so that will not end until we discover that the only solution that God has offered in this earth, this world, is the gospel. The gospel is the only message that God has sent or given to us through which we can be saved. And it offers all options. It gives you... Uh, a certain knowledge, understanding, and gives you insight into God's heart. And you know, you are saved from many things. Even those who think they are saved, there's still a lot that they need to be free from, you know, in their minds, in their upbringing. They have uh, different perception, wrong images of who God is and yet is not. All this has to end, and the message of the gospel will do the work. Glory to God, because it presents the love of God, and the love of God makes the church whole. The church is made whole by the gospel. Romans chapter 10, verse 12, it says something very important in those lines. It says, For there is no difference between the Jews and the, and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. I want you to notice, you see, in Romans chapter chapter 9, when people don't, when people stop from that chapter 9, they think, oh, so you mean that, you know, salvation and uh, God is, the Paul is talking about the supremacy of the Jews and uh, how the Gentiles were not uh, the origin of, uh, they were not, uh, in the original purpose of God, it seems that that's what we think Paul is saying. But you see, we have to consider the later. When you talk about the epistle or the later, you don't read one verse and conclude. You study you in the entire later, so understand the whole purpose of the later. So Paul wasn't claiming that the Jews have this upper hand beyond the church. He's actually taking us back in history and showing us how things worked throughout history in the Old Testament, how these people had the covenant with God and what happened, how we began with the Jews, and of course, how blessed they were to have that clue, that, uh, that privilege of uh, knowing the Jehovah God or the God who was trying to reveal himself to humanity, but even themselves did not pick it. They did not understand fully. So, but in chapter 10, we see a balance. We see something else. It's talking about every person now included, and it's talking about all of us being loved and also respond by faith in the love of God. So it is not given to some few people and denied others. It is given to all of us, and we have to embrace it as it's, clear in this chapter 10. So we are seeing even in this chapter 10, Paul talking about 
praying for his fellow Jews so that they may be saved, which means they're not saved. And he's saying, why? Because they rejected the righteousness of God and embraced, you know, the righteousness produced by the works of the law, which is also a self-regenerated faith, righteousness. And he said, because of that, they are not saved. I pray that they may be saved. You see, you cannot say that these people have an upper hand and bliss, and yet they are not saved. While Paul claims and declares in chapter 10 that they are not saved. So you see, we need to bring in the balance here and try to understand uh, what the entire uh, scriptures are talking about, not picking one uh, verse over the others and do the common uh habit you know of uh i i suggest instead of doing the exegesis so you should exegete the scriptures very well so paul in this verse 12 he says for there is no difference between the jew see this is paul so in case you thought there's a difference between the jews and the gentiles this is our invention so you might have quoted him wrongly because he cannot come in the very next verse next next chapter remember chapters and verses were put by some people to help us you know read very well but if you are seeing the flaw he cannot come in the very next verse and begin to talk about uh the union between the greeks and and, and the gentiles and the jews rather the greeks represents the, the, the gentiles and the jews are the jews of course for there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, and the Greek rather. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So it's not about uh, partiality here. No one has a privilege over the other. It says everyone who can call upon him, rich, the one who is rich unto all. See, he's rich in mercy, and all that call upon him. You know, he is the one who is declaring this. So Paul continues to present the universal scope of the gospel by defining the whosoever to whom it is addressed. See, he's talking about both the Jews and the Gentiles and the Greek, which represents the Gentiles, meaning there are no distinctions due to race, color, creed, gender, or age. Jews and Gentiles are both saved from the same thing in the same way and by the same Savior. As a result, neither can claim superiority over the other. Jesus Christ is Lord over all regardless of distinctions. Do you get it? And surprisingly, in the church, in the body of Christ, that mindset, that belief, that feeling that some people are better than others, that Jews are better than uh, Gentiles, it is a very wrong, a very wrong perception. And it is going to cripple the flow of love, the flow of, in fact, it, 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 it gives us a wrong image of God. So we see God as... Uh, partial God who elevates some over the others. And some people think so. It's not the case. It's not true. Brothers and sisters, there's no superiority of one person over the other. Jesus, the Paul is not claiming that. And Jesus is Lord over all regardless of distinctions. So it's not about the Jews or the Gentiles, you know, so that you, since you are a Jew, you are privileged, and you are a Gentile, you are, you are cast and rejected. This is, this is a, of course, the mentality, the mindset that the gospel is supposed to, to set free us from. And this is what I began with explaining to you that we have biases, the way we, we have grown up and things we, we carry in our hearts which are wrong of course and therefore we perceive God that way and we we actually take that which we have invented and we think this is how God is this is wrong brothers and sisters I want you to see there's no difference between Gentiles and the Jews we are so one we are all called to respond to him the same way shalom shalom <music>